it's a familiar story. From the Americas to Africa, Europe, Asia and Oceania, traffic tailbacks have become the norm. Since uh, 20, 30 years, the people think really about jams, how to avoid jams. But sometimes there is no avoiding it. Whether you drive on the left or the right, the question remains, why? Because it's very simple, because drivers cannot be regulated. <laughs> But there are highways where it never jams. And highways where the traffic always flows smoothly. That's something some drivers could learn from. Why do ants have much better road manners than us? And etiquette aside, perhaps they're simply the better drivers too. We took a trip to get insights from the experts. Jam is starting. Nice. We've all been stuck in a traffic jam at some point and thought, It's not really fun. <laughs> Absolutely not. On the upside, at least we're not suffering alone. I myself drive uh, directly into jams just for scientific reasons. But that's no help really, because what's the point of everybody feeling miserable, right? I'm just happy standing there, but my wife does not understand. I'm sure ants would find it hard to get their little heads around human behavior in cars and on the roads. For them, traffic jams are an alien concept. What kind of animals are ants actually? Ants basically create colonies with a social structure in which its members have different professions and tasks. They work as a team to tackle problems. Ants are also always on the move. They never stand still. Why is that? The thing with ants is, they have a common goal. They want their colony to be successful, to be productive. But we humans also have a common goal, getting from A to B. We're just not as good at it. Do you know where the longest traffic jam were measured? In third place is Houston in September 2005, when two and a half million people tried to flee the city ahead of Hurricane Rita. Interstate 45 registered a tailback of 160 kilometers for a full 48 hours. In second, Brazil during the 2014 Soccer World Cup Finals. Congestion in Sao Paulo reached a length of 344 kilometers, almost the entire distance between that city and Rio. Number one has to be Moscow in November 2012. A heavy Russian winter resulted in catastrophic congestion for three days and three nights, locking down the main highway between St. Petersburg and Moscow. More record breakers coming up, but first, what is it with us and traffic anyway? So when does bad traffic officially become a traffic jam? I would define uh, a jam as a situation where individual cars have to stop for a certain time, say for some seconds or longer. But uh, there is a uh, motion within jams. So about 10 kilometers per hour, the inner speed of a jam is. The main reason is that you do not have enough capacity. Um, of course, there are other reasons, um, but the, these reason, reasons are not that, they do not happen that often. Um, some people sometimes make driving mistakes, of course. Um, for instance, they, they do not pay enough attention and then they have to brake hard. We know what happens when there is a side or an accident, but what else causes jams? Roadworks, then accidents and heavy weather conditions. But most of that, 60%, 70%, it depends on the um, region where you look at, is due to overload on the roads. Too many cars at the same time on the same uh, route um, in the same direction. This is more or less uh, the calculation you can make everywhere, almost over the world. So what can we humans learn from ants and their behavior? 
With ants, it really is a case of one for all and all for one. But with car drivers, it's more along the lines of, how do I get to my destination as quickly as possible? It's all about individuals doing their own thing with zero consideration for anyone else. And that's something some drivers could learn from. They are very cooperative. Um, that means they, they, they do not block something um, because they are working on one common goal. They would like to, to draw food into their nest. And um, so they are very, uh, it's definitely the best word, they are very cooperative, much more than real drivers and real traffic are. The drivers on the road are non-cooperative, so they are egoistic. And it is a, a thing which hinders the whole system to be effective. So that is, we have different, uh, mathematically spoken, um, uh, maxima. That is, if you, you have a, a, a user optimum and a system optimum. And normally the driver wants to have for himself, himself the best situation. So it is a user optimum, but it's not for the system the best way um, uh, to deal with the situation. And if the, the drivers are working against each other. The whole system doesn't work very effectively. So the traffic slows down, but by how much? Setnav companies should know. I think TomTom Tom has made um, this kind of um, statistics and they, they have a number that says how much more time have you invest um, in, on your daily commute and for Berlin this number is about 30%. So that means um, in ideal case at midnight, <laughs> You arrive um, in 20 minutes and um, plus 30%, so in a sense this is something about 26 minutes, something like that. As a local, I'd have expected the delay to be longer than the 30% calculated by SETNEF. It certainly was a lot longer on April 12, 1990, a day that saw an estimated 18 million cars driving between East and West Germany. It was the first Easter weekend after the fall of the Berlin Wall and a record-breaking one. Nowadays, Berlin is the biggest city in reunified Germany by a pretty big margin. But in terms of bad traffic, Berlin barely registers on the international scale. Let's look at the top three worldwide. In Bogota, drivers spend an average of 230 hours a year in traffic jams. That's almost 10 days. That might be one reason why the city has a bad reputation for road rage. In second spot, Bangalore. In 2019, drivers in the Indian city typically lost 243 hours of their precious time stuck in traffic. But the dubious title for world's worst traffic goes to Manila. Chronic congestion in the Filipino capital caused drivers some 257 hours per year in 2019. People buy cars because they want to get somewhere fast, but what happens to them when they suddenly can't? People change their mind uh, entering a car. So you become a completely different person. If you are a very nice person in a, a private uh, environment in the car, you become a beast and uh, we have many many problems just with the say about 10 percent of the drivers which are of the um, uh, more or less aggressive kind they are then the reason for many many jets some say there's a moral decline on our roads but what does that mean many people have uh, a very very um, strong time schedule and uh, if there is a gem which they don't know uh, they become very angry. They are in their car uh, anonymous. Nobody knows your name. So the people um, then do within the traffic situations more things they normally would not do. Traffic jams are pure stress, right? It creates a kind of stress, a kind of annoyment. But okay, some people are stress hunters, isn't it? So... Are you crazy? <laughs> 
So they like this kind of adrenaline. <laughs> Not me. The car is more or less your private environment. It's like at home. It's more or less an addition, an add-on to your home. And you don't like that other people come near to you. So there is a limit about 50 centimeters. So if other cars come uh, close to you, you don't like it. You become angry against the other drivers. Why should we want other drivers getting too close for comfort? We don't like strangers peeking into our living rooms either. So how do ants do social distancing? Ants communicate with chemicals. They use a mix of pheromone signals, like watch out, or there's food here, or go this way. Ants are better drivers in some sense than they are cooperative. They work for their community. They want to have the system optimum. They want to have a um, um, working or a, a flow which is not stopped by individuals. So we can learn from the ants, but I don't think that one can teach the people to behave like ants. Of course, it would all be so easy if we humans weren't so complicated. Did you know there are seven different personality types behind the wheel? The punisher, the competitor, the teacher, the philosopher, the avoider, know-it-all, the escapee. More about that in another episode. So now back to the gym. <laughs> How much does a traffic jam cost? I said the interval speed of a traffic jam is 10 kilometers per hour. So we have a highway and you say you have a four kilometer jam, two lanes for three hours and you you can drive only 10 instead of 80. Then you can calculate what is the lost time for all the drivers there and you end up with a sum between 50 and 100,000 euro. Wow. One track. Um, I calculated for our Germany, for example, and um, you come up with, uh, say, 60 to 100 billion euro per year. We take the average 80 billion euro we lose just by standing still in jet. So you don't only lose time. A survey of US traffic came up with similar stats. It also revealed that drivers are not primarily concerned about the time they waste in traffic jams. The main reason they avoided routes that were potentially fast was due to tolls. Drivers chose to save a few dollars instead of time. And there were similar results with other studies focusing on the level of tolls. Most drivers were not willing to pay a higher fee for a so-called hot lane. As for Germany, how much time do we spend sitting around in traffic jams every year? The uh, kilometers driven on German roads per year are more than 500 billion. And within these kilometers they drive, they stand still for some time. So in jams, stuck in jams. And that is about 500 uh, 30,000 years per year that the people are standing still. Hang on, people drive half a trillion kilometers a year on German roads? It's only about 150 million kilometers from the Earth to the Sun. So we are making that trip roughly 3,300 times a year? Are we nuts? The thought that we all spend 530,000 years of human life in gems every year is maybe even more mind-blowing. Even if you spread that across the 58 million cars registered in Germany, that's pretty sad. I don't know if ants feel sad, but there are way more of them around and they seem to get on better. What's the secret? Any idea why ants have much better road manners than us? First of all, they're driving not that fast. <laughs> it means if they crash, well, it's just when, when two people hit each other on the road. Um, so in a certain sense, uh, it, it is not really dramatic. Yeah? So um, this 
definitely leads to the fact that they can have much closer distances, of course, be between each other. While cars have to have some, some distance in, in order to stay safe. You could say that ants have a kind of early warning system, inherited by each generation from previous ones. Whereas we humans need technical solutions. But uh, in the future we will have automatic systems where we can copy the behavior of ants. And uh, this is the hope that then at the end we will have a, a working traffic system which has a much larger capacity as we have today. So we can learn from ants to make better road traffic technology. And maybe we can also learn to get along better too. Did you like this film? Want to see more? Then subscribe to Ref and set your notifications so you don't miss any of our amazing content.